Here's an application of minimal polynomials with a look at Bazu's identity on matrices. We start with the following matrix A, so three by three with real entries. First, I want to find the characteristic and minimal polynomials of A. With those, I then want to evaluate the following polynomials P and Q on A. So P of X is X cubed plus X squared plus one. Q of X is equal to X squared plus one. Now, because P and Q have no common factors, we can apply Bazu's identity for polynomials. So that says there exist polynomials M of X and N of X, such that M times P plus N times Q is equal to one. If I take that equation, and we turn it into a matrix equation by replacing x with a and the constants with constants times the identity matrix, I have the following equation here. So this is what we're trying to solve. Now, for part one, to find the characteristic and minimal polynomials for a, we first find the characteristic polynomial, and that's just writing down the definition and evaluating. So our definition is determinant of xi minus a, we have this here. When I take the determinant, we wind up getting x minus two squared times x minus one. Now, by the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, that says if we take a minus two i squared times a minus i, we get the zero matrix out. Now, there may be a smaller polynomial that satisfies that equation. Okay, if we put a in, we get the zero matrix out. If we can find the smallest monic polynomial that does that, that's what we call the minimal polynomial. Now, theorem states, the minimal polynomial divides a characteristic polynomial, and each irreducible factor of the characteristic polynomial divides the minimal polynomial. So that gives us two options. We either have x minus one times x minus two, or x minus one times x minus two squared. So we just check to see which one gives us zero. Now, if I check a minus i times a minus two i, okay, just work that out. Out comes the zero matrix, so this has to be our minimal polynomial. For the next step, we use the minimal polynomial to simplify our computations. Now, we just solved the minimal polynomial on a, it gives us the zero matrix. So we have the a squared minus three a plus two i is zero, or a squared is equal to three a minus two i. If we evaluate any polynomial on A, if we repeatedly sub out the A squared, we're gonna be able to reduce the evaluation of that polynomial to some linear combination of A and I. So for instance, if I evaluate P at A, okay, we have A cubed plus A squared plus I. A cubed is equal to A times A squared. So I'll have A times three A minus two I. The A squared becomes three A minus two I. I goes to itself. And then this reduces to 3a squared minus 2a plus 3a minus i. Now, I could sub out this a squared, then that's gonna give us this expression here. So we have three times 3a minus 2i plus a minus i, and this simplifies to 10 times a minus 7i. So rather than doing all these matrix multiplications, I'm just gonna evaluate a linear combination. So here we're gonna get this matrix for P of A. For Q of A, okay, that's gonna give us A squared plus I. So we can substitute out the A squared, giving us three A minus I, and we get the matrix here. Of course, you should check that you get the same answer if you just evaluate by taking powers and then sum. For the final part, first note Bazu's identity for polynomials. Here we're in the special case where the greatest common divisor of P and Q is equal to one. So there exist polynomials M of X and N of X, such that M times P plus N times Q is equal to one. Now, the statement of Bazu's identity gives no method for finding M or N. To find those, we have two options. Either I consider the Euclidean algorithm for polynomials, that gives a method to get M and N, and if you understand the Euclidean algorithm for integers, then it's gonna be the same idea. Otherwise, the degrees of our polynomials are low enough that we can use trial and error. So with trial and error, I find, okay, one solution, 
m of x equal to x, and n of x equal to minus x squared minus x plus 1. So that you should check. Now with this solution, m of x equals x, so m of a is just a itself. If I compute n of a, okay, so here we just replace x with a, and any constants we replace with that constant times the identity matrix. We use our method from before, and that gives us minus 4a plus 3i to get this matrix here. Now, if we do all the substitutions into the left-hand side of our equation, okay, we'll have these products. When we work them out and we add, what comes out is the identity matrix. So the m and n that we found are going to work with our equation.